Tip number four: degas conditions. When degassing a sample, an inert gas flow or vacuum can be used with or without applying heat. When the material is known to have a high moisture content, flowing nitrogen can speed up the degas time, also known as the flow degas. When working with microporous samples, a high vacuum degas is preferred. These two methods can be used interchangeably for some samples, but sometimes it can yield different results when changing the method depending on the material. So, if you have a pool of historical data to compare to, it is best to stay with the consistent degas conditions. When using the flow degas method, make sure to insert the probe all the way to the bottom of the sample bed. Tilting the sample tube can help to insert the probe without touching the sample to prevent clogging the probe. Another factor to consider is the temperature. Carefully select the temperature so the surface of the sample is clean and free from any moisture or atmospheric gases without compromising the sample. High temperatures can speed up the degas time and clean the surface faster, but it's not always the correct approach. For example, most pharmaceutical samples will be damaged with heat. Therefore, the degas is typically performed under ambient temperature overnight. Check the SDS of your material for the melting point and select a reasonable temperature below the melting point for a successful degas of the sample. Here is an example of a carbon black sample degas under vacuum at different temperatures: 50, 150, 250. And 350 degrees in Celsius for 30 minutes. As shown here, the higher temperature degas resulted in more quantity absorbed as well as the BT surface area. To determine the best degas conditions for a new material, it is worthwhile to take some time to do a method development by experimenting with different temperatures and durations. Also, a thermal gravimetric analysis can give insight into how much it takes for a sample to be completely degassed. While holding at one temperature, for more information, check the webinar called "Best Practices for BET" by Dr. Katerina Pykert. She provides great insight on the history and theory of BET and the optimal analysis conditions for different types of samples.